Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Guys, can you please just raise your hand if you are there? All of you, please respond to me. Have got hardly six, seven uh, reply. OK, that's great. Thank you guys for the response. So let's move ahead to the next uh, path to our session. Give me a minute. Let me just open my PPT. OK, so I hope my screen is visible. <coughs> so now we have just discussed uh, before the break about all the identity concept, how we can create an identity or how we can manage the identity where we have discussed creating a user, creating a uh, user as a bulk, OK, creating a group, managing the group, assigning the role to the user, OK, and how we can add the member to the group uh, manually or as a dynamically. Then we have discussed that how we can uh, work with the external identities when you are adding a guest user. What are the different settings we can configure related with the external identity? Now we are heading towards the next part where we are going to understand about the hybrid identity concept. So here in this topic, we are going to discuss that how we can plan, design or implement the interconnect. We are going to implement and manage the password hash synchronization, implement and manage pass through authentication. We are going to work with the uh, federation identity, troubleshoot of synchronization error, implement uh, Microsoft Connect, uh, Intra Connect Health, okay, and then manage Intra Connect Health. So let's first understand what is intra connect. See intra connect, you can take it like uh, there are some organization. There are many organization. They are managing their uh, your identity on on premises. Let me just give you a diagram for the same. Just give me a minute. Do not know why I'm getting this. So. OK.
OK, so let's take it as your on premises infrastructure. So in your on premises infrastructure like this is your organization and this organization they may be having like let's say. Um, OK, so let's say they have. Active directory that I'm keeping it here. OK, so this is my active directory. Let's say this is a Federation service. OK. Then uh, let's say this is my active directory. So this is my on premises infrastructure. And here we are even managing some users. OK, so let me add. Few users over there. OK. Right now these users, their identities are managed here on the local Active Directory. OK, now for example, uh, now this organization want to switch to cloud also. OK, now they have got to know, OK, there are some cloud services and there are some advantages of the cloud moving towards the cloud and in this cloud. They have like let's say. Um, all the Office 365 services. Or we can take it M. 365. Apps. OK. Then you may have some other legacy application. Some cloud application. OK. Uh, so that is your cloud services. You have some also SaaS applications and all that you have, and then you have your Azure Active Directory. Okay, this is your Azure Active Directory that is now known as Entra. Okay, so now this Azure, this Active Directory. That is managing your users. OK. Now here if I take. This diagram over there. If I take this. So this active directory we are using to manage our users. Now and these users. They are using these cloud services and now when these users they have to access any of these cloud services, any of this Microsoft 365 application, any SaaS application and all. So for that this act, this Azure Active Directory that is your Entra that is managing their identities. This is your. Entra and this Entra is managing their identities. Now. What about these users? Now this organization wants that I have already a setup of my on premises infrastructure and I am already having this uh, active directory that is managing my on premises, my uh, users on on premises. OK, but these users also want to have the access on the cloud resources. OK, 
So how it is possible? So for that there is a tool that is. Entra connect. This you can take it as a Entra connect. So this Entra connect creates a bridge. You can take it as a bridge. Between your Active Directory. And your. On premises Active Directory. So this setup is known as hybrid setup. And this concept is known as hybrid identity concept. Now when this is intra connect is here, this is working as a bridge. Now your users are able to use your cloud services and the on premises services. OK, so this uh, even like all over the advantages you get with Entra, that is your cloud. So that even all the options, all the you know features, all the capabilities, even that can be used with your on premises users. OK, so now even your on premises user having the advantage of your cloud services and your cloud user are having uh, advantage of your on premises services. Now when organization want this kind of a setup. Like let's say there are some uh, you know services, some organization they are uh, have their on premises infrastructure. They want to go to the cloud, but they want their footprint still to be there on premises. OK, and they do not want to compromise with the security part. As we have observed the more we are moving towards the virtual world, we are moving towards the cloud and all. There are more security con uh, concepts. OK, it is just like when you are having your jewelry and your cash and all and you are keeping it with you in your uh, home at your home cupboard, right? It is there in front of you. You can keep an eye on it. But for example, you are, uh, you know, traveling somewhere. When you are traveling, the exposure is too much. You are going to meet thousands of people. There are more area to be exposure. Then there is you are more concerned about the security when your money or your jewelry is traveling with you. Right, so similarly when your data or information is moving in the cloud, it is very important for you to have a secure infrastructure. So there are some organization. They do not want to compromise with the security part. They still want to have a on premises footprint, including the features of their cloud. So in that case, this Entra connect that sync the identity of cloud and on premises. And in this case, users are able to have the advantage of cloud and then on premises both. Let me take you back over there. OK, so this Microsoft Entra, this cloud sync, you can take it as it is built on the top of your Microsoft Entra services and it has two main key important age, uh, components. The first one that you have provisioning agent. And the second is your provisioning services. Now provisioning agent, this provisioning agent uh, that is a, uh, the Microsoft Entra Connect that uh, cloud provisioning agent that is built on the same server side technology as your application services and pass through authentication. It requires an outbound connection only and agents are auto updated. Provisioning services, the services using the uh, you know scheduler based model. In case of cloud sync, the changes are provisioned every two minutes. There are two authentication methods that are used. The first one that is your cloud authentication and second is your federation authentication. When it's a cloud authentication, your uh, identities, your uh, you know, when your user is going to sign in, that all authentic uh, author authentication is done on cloud. So there are two type of authentication methods that is used in cloud. That is your Microsoft Entra password hash synchronization. 
where the user uses the same username and password that they use on premises. So even the user there are on premises. They do not need to be bothered like using the two email ID and password like using the different user ID password for using the cloud services and the different for the on premises. No, it's not like that. So they are only having the you one user ID and password. It will be synced and using the same user and password they would be able to use both the services. OK, and they would be able to authenticate for the same. The second is your Microsoft Entra pass through authentication. This is simple password validation for Entra ID authentication service using a software agent that runs on one or more on premises server. So here basically a on premises server. OK, that is a kind of a agent that works for the password validation. OK, but the identity is this is managed by the on server and the third one that is a federation authentication where there is a federation server that is responsible for the authentication for your uh, that uh, identities. So here you can understand it how this Entra connect helps to uh, sync your identity. OK, so in this Microsoft Entra connect, as I said, it's work as a bridge. Let me take this pen. So now here, let's say this is your cloud identity. That is your Microsoft Entra. Where you have all your cloud identities and this is your active directory for us. That is your on premises identity. Now when you have to sync your identities, so in between there is a role of your Microsoft Entra connect. So what actually it happens? So this connect it uses a SQL database to hold the data. See when your uh, let me go back. Yeah, so when your data is moving from your. Let me take this. And from here I will be taking this. So when your data is moving or traveling. From this location, your cloud to on premises. OK. And vice versa. And in between somewhere there is a. Identities are synced. OK, so in between there a uh, storage is needed. OK, so you need a storage where the identities which is coming from this side and this time they meet and then they sync with each other. OK, so for that we need a, pay, a, a space that we, you can take it as a temporary space. OK, so that is space already this Microsoft connects gives. Where? There is like importing and exporting function starts. So when the data is X is imported from your active directory and exported to the entry ID in between there is a connector space. There is a connector space for this one and here there is a metaverse which is basically syncing your identity and this is how your data is flowing from active directory to entry ID and then entry ID to your active directory. Now when you are moving to your hybrid setup, there are different methods for the authentication. The first one that you have a password hash synchronization. So in your password hash synchronization. There is a value like the all your uh, identity authentication process that is processed on the cloud. Like here, this is has password hash synchronization. In this active directory domain services, it basically store your password in a pass in a form of hash value. OK, so here uh, 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 that hash value is a you can take it as a result of one way mathematical function and there is no method to revert the result of one way function to the plain text version of a password. 
to synchronize your password this microsoft intra connect it sync exact your password hash from the on premises active directory instance and this extra security processing is applied to the password hash before it synchronized to the entra id authentication services and these passwords these passwords are synchronized on a per user basis in a chronological order so when a user or your on premises user is trying to connect to your on premises services so via your on premises active directory it passes through the intra connect and then user is able to uh, uh, connect to your on premises services and here the authentication take place to enable your password hash synchronization when you are going to set up your intra connect there is a option password hash synchronization so when you are not going to select any of the option this is a default uh, option that is set up for your user to sign in even there is one more way like to set up uh, intra connect in a express way so even in a express way this is the default sign on method that is selected for your hybrid users the next that you have the another method that is a pass through authentication so in this pass through authentication there is a agent requirement for pass through authentication using two agent for redundancy so here in this case you will notice there is a user okay and there is your microsoft entra id so when a user is trying to connect okay so there is a authentication agent okay so that is working for the sign in method and then through the intra connect then user is going to connect with intra id and then user is trying to use and user is able to use the cloud services so basically between your active directory and your intra in between there is a authentication agent that is going to authenticate your identities so this is basically the line that shows this is your cloud infrastructure this is your on premises in between there is a intra connect with the help of that your identities are synchronized and user are able to uh, go from on premises to the cloud infrastructure okay so here in this diagram you can uh, understand in a more better way so this password through authentication that allow your user to sign in in both on premises and your cloud based application using the same password and this feature provides your user a better experience so one less password to remember that's it and reduces the it help desk cost because your users are less likely to forget how to sign in and when user sign in uses entra id this feature validate user password directly against your on premises active directory so when you are going to set up the pass through authentication you need to select the user sign in method there is a second option pass through authentication and there are some additional tasks that you can perform you can change the user sign in and others privacy related setting that can be configured Now let's understand the seamless sign, single sign out. So this uh, seamless single sign on, this automatically signs your user in when they are on their corporate device connected to your corporate network. So when it is enabled, user do not need to type to their password to sign in into your Microsoft Entra. And usually even uh, type in their username. So this feature basically provide your user, you know, to easily access your cloud based application without meeting any additional on premises component. This can be uh, combined with either the password has synchronization or even if you are using the pass through authentication. But this single sign on is not supported with Federation services ADFS. So when you're trying to set up your single sign on, so while selecting for user sign in method that may be a password 
uh, synchronization or pass through synchron authentication. There uh, you have an option to enable the single sign on. So while set up, just you have to enable this, just you have to check it. That's it. And you would be able to set up the single sign on. Now let's uh, understand now about your uh, implementing and managing the federation. So in this federation, there is a federation server you can see that is working in between to validate the identities. OK, for the sign in purpose. So basically this federation is what federation you can take it as a collection of domains that have established trust. The level of trust may vary, but typically it includes the authentication and almost always includes authorization. A typical federation, it might include number of organizations that have established trust for share access to a set of resources. So you can federate your on premise environment with Microsoft Intra ID and use this federation for authentication and authorization. So here you have uh, this in between that you have Microsoft Intra Connect that is working with the federation services and user is able to connect with your on premises and ID. And your extra uh, external user, they are able to sign in with the help of web application proxy. So when you're trying to deploying uh, your uh, federation with ADFS and Entra Connect, you should be having local administration credentials for your federation server and local administrator credentials or any workgroup server that you intend to deploy and web application proxy role on. The machine that you run the wizard on to be able to connect to any other machine that you want to install ADFS or web application proxy. You need to specify the ADFS server, OK? When you are connecting uh, to an ADFS form. So you need to specify the server where you want to install your ADFS. And you can just add one or more server depending on your capacity need. So before you set up this configuration, you need to join all ADFS server to Active Directory. And this setup, uh, this um, step you can say is not required for the application proxy server, web application proxy server. Coming to the next part of this uh, topic where we are going to discuss the Intra Connect Health. Intra Connect Health, you can take it as a tool, okay, that provide you uh, the a facility to monitor your on premises identity infrastructure. So uh, where you have, you know, use the Entra connect to connect your on premises and your cloud identity. So you can monitor that how this connection is going on. What is the health of the same? Is this connection is working fine or not? OK, so this reliability is basically achieved by providing monitoring capability of your key identity component. It makes a key data point about these component easily accessible. So when you're going to install uh, Intra Connect Health, so by default, basically uh, only global administrator, he can install and configure the health agent, access the portal and do any operation within the Intra Connect Health. Microsoft Intra Connect Health, you can, uh, it is only uh, available with your premium features. Like as I said, there are three type of licenses. In, in free uh, one, you do not have this feature available. Only with the P1 and P2 licenses, you can use the Entra Connect Health option. This health agent, it must be installed on targeted server. So that they can receive data and provide the monitoring and analytical capability. 
For example, to get data from your Active Directory Foundation services, you must install the agent on your ADFS server and the web application proxy server so that like similarly like your data from your on premises entra you must install the agent of the domain controller so whatever the prerequisite are there or if there is any issue happen it is going to keep an eye on the same so this is an example of entra connect help for adfs installation step that you can uh, refer over there Azure AD Connect Health ADF FS Diagnostic Service, ADFS Insight Service, and Monitoring Service. Now, when you are going to manage your Entra Connect Health, so you can configure uh, this service to send email notification when any alert indicates that your identity infrastructure is not healthy. So here as an admin, you can put your email ID over over there so that you will be getting the notification for the same. There are some additional tasks that you can configure like delete a server on service instance or managing the access with Azure role based access control. While the synchronization even you can have or experience some errors also. OK, so for that, like uh, first is to duplicate user principal name or proxy addresses. Like for example, the user principal name is changed in your cloud and your hybrid. So then it is going to give you the error. OK, or the duplicate the same record is available in both the places. Then the maybe there may be any attribute related error that may be the principal name address, the proxy address and so on. These are some potential synchronization error that you may face may face like invalid or data mismatch error or it may be data validation failure. It may be large object or uh, that may be admin role conflict like as an admin. I'm having the global administrator role, but another place I'm only having the user administrator role. So because of this role conflict again, it is going to give you the error and then unique your Attribute value must be unique. So now by the end of uh, this topic, we are done with the initial Microsoft Intra ID configuration. Where we have discussed the rules, custom rules and tenant wide setting. We have discussed how we can create the users group, assign the licenses and all. We have discussed about the external identities and we have just covered the part of hybrid identity. I cannot give you the demo for the hybrid identity because it takes more than one and a half hour. So that's why we do not have the enough time to explain or take you to the demo for the hybrid identity. But I hope I could give you the overview for the same. Anyone any question so far any doubt? Let me share you an important link that is help you out for the hybrid setup. This is the documentation for the hybrid identity. You can refer this document. It will give you the entire information about the hybrid setup, your uh, Entra Connect and all. OK, now let me take you to the another learning path.
OK, so I hope my screen is visible. So now in this learning path, we are going to understand that how we can implement uh, authentication and access management solution. So in this topic, we are going to discuss about the multi-factor authentication, like how we can plan for the multi-factor authentication and how we can implement the multi-factor authentication. Then we will be understanding about uh, user authentication and managing for the same and how we can plan and uh, for the condition access policies, how we can implement that. Then we are going to heading towards the next part that is in uh, identity protection. Where we can understand that how we can create the policy for the sign in risk and the user risk. And the last we are going to discuss about the access management for the Azure resources. Now let's first understand about the first topic secure Microsoft Entra user with multi factor authentication. Before starting with topic, anyone can you please let me know if you have any information about the multi factor authentication or can you please let me know like if your organization is using multi factor authentication for you? And if yes, then which authentication method you guys using apart from your? Password. Yes, anyone? Anyone who can let me know if you have multi factor authentication in your organization? OK. No one. Are you guys miss? Uh, should I say, take it as like you guys are only using identity and password? Is it like that? Can you at least uh, reply me in a yes or no? So when you are going to log into your organization, are you using ID and password or any other password method you are using? OK, anyone? OK, so can you at least answer? Do you know any other uh, method of the authentication apart from the password? Have you ever used OTP for the same? Or have you ever used the authenticator app? OK, so Anmol has replied that uh, he is using authenticator. OK, text. SMS, OK, good. So first understand what is this multi factor authentication and why I'm asking do you use any other method of the authentication? So when see guys, we all are using ID and password. That is what the common way of authentication everywhere we use. Let's say when you have to log into any of the account like that, maybe any, uh, you know, a uh, government website that may be your organization account that may be any other another you know there are different other application that you generally log in in your uh, you know mobile application there may be some you know uh, uh, like uh, you are guys must be using netflix some of you must be using hotstar prime some of you must be using you know shopping application mantras and all and there are some other application okay so you might have observed that whenever you are going to use that service or application, you need to authenticate yourself. OK, now when you are going to authenticate yourself, it may be that you have to put your email ID. You may need to put your uh, phone number. OK, and the time you are going to enter your phone number immediately a uh, OTP is sent to you. So this OTP is what? This OTP is the method of the authentication. You immediately get a text uh, message. With a code. OK, that is a OTP. OK, or some of you must be having a, you know. A password and every time you are using the same password to authenticate yourself. Or sometime even we get a call, 
right we get a call and on our call they get give give us some you know um, the code and all and that code we need to share so these all are the different methods of the authentication for the different platform now coming to your uh, uh, office 365 account in microsoft here when you are going to log in there are uh, authentication different authentication method that can be set for the user now why we need this multi factor authentication so when you are using microsoft entra there are different features that will help to protect your cloud asset so protecting your cloud asset is one of the primary goal for your security groups and one of the primary way uh, to unauthorize user to get access to system to uh, you know by obtaining the valid username password combination of the same so azure can help mitigate this with several feature of entra like the first one that you have password complexity so this password complexity rules it will force your user to generate the hard to guess password see generally what happens that when we set up a password as i said we human beings always you know wants to uh, keep a easy password that is easy to remember but the time you are going to choose a easy password so of course it would be easy for the uh, attackers to guess that easy password right they they may easily guess that it may be you know when when someone you know trying to hack your account they are going to use you know the common passwords like let's say they are going to use your name a combination of your date birth date of birth date of birth of your family member or their name and so on so these are the commonly used words that we pick as a password so this password complexity rule it force you to use the hard password let's say like when i was trying to log in for my new user it was not allowing me to use the password that is already used multiple times okay or you can set the password like it should be at least a length of 8 to 15 okay or there should be the combination of of uh, you know word or uh, new number and alphabet and uh, symbols and so on and at least one word should be the capital see the combination of all three automatically make your password complex then setting up the expiration rule so when your password should be expired like in my organization after every 3 month i have to reset my password okay and my password will be expired so there are very 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 less chances that my password can be leaked it may be that there is a, a user who is keeping an eye when you are putting the password so he may you know may be trying to guess your password so automatically it will be expired after 3 months you are going to set up a new password so there will be less chances to misuse of your password the third uh, facility that you get or the text fe third feature that you get with entra that is your self service password reset now this self service password reset is what where you are making your user able to set their password their own okay like currently in your organization when a user is trying to reset the password or if he feel like that someone has guessed his password his password is leak or he is fog he has forgotten his password in that case he is going to ask the help from the help desk administrator now let's say for that time period that person is not available he may be engaged in another activity so for that time period the productivity of your employees are you know it's just like it is there is a harm for that productivity then the thing should be that you should make your user able to change their password on so they will be more productivity whenever there is there is a need to change the password they would be able to make it and there is no dependency on the administration then you have the identity protection identity protection is a feature 
that help you to protect uh, your organization identities. Like you can uh, configure it for user uh, uh, risk uh, type of uh, uh, behavior. If there is sign in risk, user risk. So this behavior, these risky behaviors are automatically configured. This it is like you can automatically respond to these type of risk. Basically, like whenever there is a user risk, whenever there is a sign in risk, immediately it should be respond to the same. Then Microsoft Entra password protection. This password protection, it can block the commonly used and compromised password. Here you can configure like let's say. Uh, I'm using a password, OK? Uh, Sometimes you might have noticed, especially for the bank and all, if you are typing the wrong password. Bank is going to give you only three chance. If the three attempt fail, it means it is not the authorized user. Someone is trying to, you know, unauthorized person is trying to use your account and immediately your account is blocked. Right, so this can be done with a password protection that after three attempts, wrong attempt, five attempts, account will be freezed. OK, and you can just put some, you know, commonly used password. You can block that password. Nobody would be able to use that. Then you have single sign on. So single sign on is what where using just you have to sign in only once. So you are going to access to your application and then it includes thousands of pre integrated SaaS application. Then you have Entra application proxy that you can provision security enhance remote access to your on premises web application. Microsoft Entra Connect that we have just discussed that is used to create a bridge between your cloud infrastructure and on premises infrastructure. And the last feature that is your Entra MFA and condition access policies. Now, when you're going to configure the Entra self service password reset, so it is going to allow user that he can reset his own password. When you are going to configure, there is a very uh, it, it basically the reduce uh, the loss of your user productivity. But for that user must be enrolled for the same. So when you are going to enable the self service password reset, you have an option. Do you want to enable it for all the users or you want to enable it for a group of user? OK, like let's say I do not want to enable it to every user, but for a group of users that I do not want their productivity should be compromised. So here the user must be enrolled for the self service password reset. Now the benefit is that there is no admin uh, intervention when it is configured. It reduces the efforts of help desk administrators and required an assigned license for the same. Now let me show you how we can enable the self service password reset. Yeah, so under protection here you have an option to password reset under password reset. There is properties and under properties you have option to enable self service password reset. So right now in my organization light like, uh, in my trial environment, I have set it up for all the. Users. OK, if I click on none, so none of the user would be able to set up the password. And if I click on selected, so here I need to select the group 
and for that group member only this option will be enabled. Let's say I'm making it enable for all the users. Now let's say let's test it for one of my test user. OK, so this was the users that I have created. That was my test user. Let me sign out. OK, so for example, when I'm trying to sign in. So here I'm getting a message. Forgot my password. Let me click on it. OK, now here I'm getting this message email and username. Which is asking me to enter the character. Okay. Okay, it says that you haven't registered for the password reset. Okay, we'll click on register for self service password reset. Okay, but that I have already set. Then why it is not working? Okay, 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 okay. I got to know. So here, basically, Let me again sign in. So this is not allowing me because I have not set up the other authentication method. Do you remember when I was trying to uh, sign in with my test user? It was asking me to set up my account. So that setup is not done because of that. It is not allowing me for the same. Like if I go back for self service, there are some authentication method that I have set. Right, so either uh, like uh, user need to go through with this authentication method. Then only he would be able to reset his password. So for that, let me just go to that account. Yeah, so here it is like here user is asked to set up a set up his account. So now I want to set up a different method. So let me choose the method. OK, so for example, I am going to choose phone number. Confirm. Now here I have to give a phone number so that user will be getting the OTP on the same number. So I'm going to use my account, my phone number. Let me select the number. Here I have an option. Do you want to receive a code or call me? So I will be selecting receive a code option. Now I'm going to enter my contact number. Let me just stop sharing my screen. OK, so I have received a code, a verification code to my text message. Let me enter that code.
and now that account is set up now. So one method is done. Next. I'm sharing my screen back. So I have set up my contact number as a verification method. So that is set for my user. Even that I will be using for the multi-factor authentication. And now I will just try again to sign out and try to reset my password. I have registered, then it still is not allowing me. You haven't registered for password reset. Huh? But I have reset. Can't sign in. You must contact your administrator. Mm -hmm. Okay, but account is set up. Why it is not allowing me? Yeah, see, I have set up this. Now it is asking me for that uh, code. So I have received the code. Verification code that is. Yes. OK, I need to set up two methods. Email ID confirm. OK, cannot use the email from your organization. See, as it's a test account, I do so much stuff. So sometimes even I forget what I have, that setting I have done. Okay, so let me four, six, two. Okay, so that even is set. Two method I have set. Okay, that is done. So now again, let me just again reset. I hope this time I should be able to reset. It should allow me for the same.
try my mobile number, text my mobile number. Okay, so now I have used another code. Now it is asking me to set up the strong password. So it's done. So now I could successfully uh, reset my password. So this is what like. Uh, I have enabled the self service password reset over there. OK, and now when you are enabling the self service password, see again like it may be that there is an unauthorized user who is trying to reset the password, right? He may click on forget the password. In that case, how you are going to, you know, validate that you are the authorized user who is trying to change the password. So in that case here, under this password reset, you can set up the authentication method. So like here in this case, I have set up the two method of the authentication that is uh, email and password. OK, so if both the methods are set up for the users, then user would be able to reset his password. Anyone any questions so far? OK, so Sridhar, I think uh, I have got to know my problem. <laughs> OK. So now that is done, let me go back to my PPT. So that was about enabling SSPR. So under SSPR licensing options, so this feature cloud only user password change. Uh, it is available with enter ID free and business standard business premium and P1 and P2. Cloud only user password reset. See when this is for the password change, like when you are trying to change the password. OK, in this case, uh, user already know the password and he want to change it. OK, resetting is what the thing that we have just done means I do not know my password. I have forgot the password and I'm trying to reset. So this resetting is not available with free account. OK, but same is available with other licenses. But if your user is trying to change the password that is available in all the licenses. Coming to the hybrid user password change or reset that is only available with premium accounts that may be business premium or P1 or P2. So we have I have just given you the demo that how you can configure uh, and deploy self service password reset. Now heading towards the next part that is user sign in report. So under uh, or for the authentication detail, it uh, provide you the information like a list of authenticated uh, authentication policies that is applied to the users. OK, like if some of the users where I have applied the condition access policy or maybe per user MFA or security default. So whatever it is, you will be having idea then whether or not the authentication attempt for successful or not. So that all we can just check it out. So for that, I will again take you back. To my account under users. There is a sign in logs. This is all user sign in log. By default, it is giving me for last seven days. 
but here you can check it out like uh, from the morning I am using uh, for my test user. OK, so here you will notice that how many time it was successful for the text user. This was interrupted, interrupted success. OK, and the application that I was trying to use with this account, I can see this is the date timing username application status from which IP address this user was trying to log in. What is the location for the same like right now? I'm from Mumbai location. Then this is the conditional access policies, whether it is applied or not. So when next time I'm going to apply the condition access policy, I will come back and will show you that here it is going to show me that yes, that uh, which condition access policy is applied and for the authentication method here, single method authentication, multi factor authentication that was successful. Got it. So here you can have the sign in logs for your users. Coming to the next topic that is multi factor authentication. See as we have discussed about the password complexity and all password protection, but you know only with your uh, only using your user name, uh, user ID and password. It's not enough for the authentication. So if you are want to if you want to make it more, you know, uh, like hard to guess the passwords and all. So better you can secure your identities by using multi factor authentication. This multi factor authentication gives you the additional method of the authentication for the user to make it more secure. When you are configuring the multi factor authentication, it makes your account more secure. And when as a administrator, it is easy for you to set up and manage and it gives you the strong identity verification like it, it, with your password, you can set up the uh, you know text code ODP OTP or a call or it may be multi factor in multi um, uh, authenticator app. So these all are the methods that can be used. Under the category of the authentication method. Here when you are using uh, that uh, using the factor of the authentication, it can be that something that you know. OK, so that is your first category. It may be any password that you know. It may be any security question. OK, and the answer for the same. Second, it may be something that you possess. It means it may be that your mobile had mobile application. For example, as a second method of authentication, I'm getting, uh, you know, the notification on my authentication app. So when I'm going to approve that, then only I'm going to log in. So this is what something that you possess. It may be your biometric. It may be a key or it may be a card. OK, the third is that something you are. So that is your fingerprint that may be your face scan. That may be used for your authentication like so many of you must be using mobile application where just your face authentication is going to open your mobile devices. OK, so there are three categories, three factor of the authentication, something that you know, something you possess and something you are. You can enable the multi factor authentication by using different ways. The first way is that you can enable the NFA for the particular user. Second, you can enable the multi factor authentication on the basis of some condition. Let's say I have enabled the multi factor authentication for those users who want to uh, who are from so and so group or who are from finance group as the finance group are handling some important information. So when they are going to log in, I want that they should be, uh, you know, having multi factor authentication. Or let's say I have some administrators. So for administrator, I want that 
multi factor authentication should be enabled so you can enable the multi factor authentication on the basis of some condition okay it can be on the basis of the location it can be on the basis of you know application load type of devices and so on there are three state of the mfa first by default it is disable it is not set up for mfa second is the enable like a uh, user is enrolled for mfa but still they can use the password they can avoid the multi factor authentication simply okay you are enabling them if they wish they can uh you know go for the multi factor authentication third stage is enforce you are forcing user to go with the mfa else they would not be able to log in right so these all are the three stages of mfa there are few consideration for mfa that based of the infrastructure so the first one that is if you have cloud only setup so there is no additional requirement for mfa in this case if you have hybrid setup then entra connect must be deployed that we have already discussed that if you want to allow your on premises user to go with the cloud features so for that entra setup should be done need on premises legacy application so in this case microsoft entra application proxy must be deployed and to use entra mfa with radius authentication a network policy server must be set up and configured so when you are okay that now uh, we have to set up the multi factor authentication you have decided the way for the multification now we can plan for the multi factor authentication deployment so here in this case the first thing is that you need to get employees by in means you need to uh, you know uh, communicate with the users that we are going to set up the multi factor authentication or these are the uh, methods that we are going to use okay so that your user uh, will not be interrupted okay like suddenly i am going to log in and it is asking me for the setup of the account i do not have any information nothing communication was done so user you know productivity will be you know suffered so better it should be properly communicated that what is this multi factor authentication okay you are going to send them email posters supporting items it may be some documentation some ppts that you are going to share with your employees second is that consider rolling mfa out in waves where you are going to you know just communicate everyone like how this mfa works and all so first consider rolling out mfa in waves that is start with a very small group okay do not implement directly to the whole organization just make it enable for few users like let's say 10 user 15 user that's it then learn with them make them learn how this works how they can set up the mfa when they are comfortable when it's work out for that test user then you can enable it for other user and so on then create a full communication plans after that just tie your mfa roll out with a conditional access means uh, it if you are planning it as per the condition like let's say if user is working from office he will not be or uh, he should not be go for the multi factor authentication the password is enough but if user is working from home any of the location outside the office he should be asked for the multi factor authentication if user is using organization own devices like you know uh, some organization they provide the devices to the employees mobile or laptop or tablet then you can skip the mfa but if user is using let's say personal mobile personal laptop then he should be asked for the multi factor authentication it may be used for a particular application like let's say when user is trying to use the uh, let's say uh, microsoft teams or when he is trying to use the outlook then he should be go for multi factor authentication so you can make it as per some condition also 
Once it is done, you need to choose which authentication method you are trying to use. Are you going to use text message like user need to use his mobile number? Are you going to use any additional email ID so user can use his personal email ID to get the password? Or it may be a user can uh, use multi-factor authentication. Or do you want to give them choice which authentication method they can use? And then you can finally plan for the multi-factor authentication registration process. And then you can add on Promiser system after MFA is established. The supported authentication methods are to use the mobile application that is the Microsoft Authenticator app. Second is your column phone and the third is text message to a phone number. Now let's see how we can enable the multi-factor authentication to your organization. So here the first way is that that when you are going to set up the multi-factor authentication before that, um the very first thing is that like the organization doors are totally new to this uh microsoft 365 or this cloud environment they even do not know how to start how to set up the condition access policy or any security and all so for them here there is a option for the security default OK, so this security default is a feature like let me click on manage condition access. OK, let me go back. So there is actually condition access policy enable. So this security default is a feature that you can enable that will by default enable the condition access policy for all the users and all the administrators. OK, so this option is for those organization who do not know from where to start the security setup and all. OK, so it by default start the condition access policy, but if you are trying for not for the condition, sorry, my bad. I'm talking about the multi-factor authentication that this security default if it is enabled. So it by default enable the multi-factor authentication. OK, now if you want to enable the conditional access, conditional based multi-factor authentication. In this case, you have to make sure that security default this option is disabled. OK, so this was the first way for the multi-factor authentication. Now the second way is that for a particular user. Let's say I have my test user that I created in the morning. This is my test user. I'm selecting it. And here. I have an option for per user MFA. So now here just find out the users. This is my test new user. Select that user. You can select multiple users also. And here you have an option to enable it. Let me click on enable. Enable multi-factor authentication. So now if I go back, this option is enable for the user. If you want to enforce, you can enforce that. Now, if I'm trying to log in. It is asking me the another method of authentication. Earlier it was not asking me. While resetting it was asking that was a different thing because I was trying to reset the password and there I have set up. But this time I'm only trying to log in and it is asking me the another method of authentication. Because I have just enabled the authentication multi-factor authentication for my user. OK, so now let me go back. 
So this was a per user MFA like particular user you want to enable it. Now let me go back. This was the first method. Now the second is that you can enable the multi-factor authentication for the conditional access space. So for that here under protection, I have conditional access. OK, under conditional access. You can go to policies. Here already some conditional access policies are enabled. Let me create a new policy. Now you have to give the name of the users. You want to put them for that MFA and all. For example, I will set up one of my user. Let's say if it is ABC. No, no, not this one. I will select it. OK, now the user is selected. If you want to add any other user, all the users and all. Then coming to grant. Under grant here, you are going to grant the access and require multi-factor authentication. OK, so when you are going to select this. So now this policy is enabled for my selected users. So this was the conditional base MFA. You can even make it for a particular location like let's say I will just go back to my current policy. Here you have conditions. Let me select the condition. You can make it as per the location. OK, you can make it as per the devices. OK, let me select uh, target resources. OK, under target resources, I will select the application. And here I will select the particular application. Let me. For example, if I am selecting for Office 365. Now, in this case, a user is whenever a user is trying to uh, log in for Office 365 application, he will be asked for multi-factor authentication. But for other application, he will be skipped for the same. So this is how on the basis of the condition you can decide that device locations and all. Similarly, like let's say. You can make it on the basis of a group, so even you can include the entire group. OK, or let's say if it is condition on the basis of the devices. So here you can see the devices like for example, if user is trying to use the iOS devices or if user is you is using the Android devices. So on the basis of the devices that you are going to use. So only in that devices user will be asked for the multi-factor authentication. Coming to the location. This is for the location like any location selected location so you can select the location. OK. Any all trusted locations and so on so that you can do on the basis of your location. So this is how you can set up the MFA uh, with the condition access policies. Anyone any questions so far? Anyone any query any question so far? Okay. 
Okay, so guys, let's take a break, break for uh, 10 minutes and we'll continue with the next topic where we are going to configure the methods for the multi-factor authentication. And we will understand how we can monitor the MFA user authentication and all. Let's take a break first.
Okay, so I'm back guys. I hope you all are there. The break is over. Can you all please raise your hand if you are there in the class? Hello everyone, if you are there, can you please raise your hand? Okay, what about others? Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so now as we have uh, just uh, configured the MFA, enable the MFA. So now when we are planning for the MFA, so what are the different other authentication method that you can configure for the multi-factor authentication method? So there are some Azure authentication methods. Give me a minute. So these are some Azure authentication methods like Microsoft Authenticator application, Windows Hello for Business, Fido2 Security Key, Oath application, Oath Hardware Token, Software Token, SMS, and Voice Call. There are some supplemental Oath for needs use like security questions that is not admin today, no, not admin only, non-admin only, email address that is a part of SSPR if it is enabled, and app password that is for your legacy application. So registering for an authentication method. So you need to register for the authentication method. So how should we like there are some additional security verifications like uh, how should we contact you where you have to uh, select the authentication method, authentication uh, phone number, select your countries, whether you want to, uh, you know, select for the call me method or for uh, send a code any uh, by the text message like the way I have just configured where I have used the send me a code by text message. This is for the monitoring adoption like for the authentication method that how many users have used that method, how many users are using the mobile method or the Microsoft Authenticator app or some users who are using the software token. So all the information you will be getting over there. If you want to extend your MFA. To your devices. So for that you can use the condition access policy here when you are going to click for the cloud application here you can select for which uh, you know application you want to enable the MFA or you can select it for the particular devices whether you want to enable it for the window devices whether you want to make it for the uh, you know uh, uh, Applications for uh, iOS devices or for the Android devices and so on. Next, let's uh, move towards the how we can monitor the MFA. So for monitoring the MFA to review and understand your intra multi factor authentication events, you can use the Microsoft intra ID sign in reports. This report shows the authentication details for your events when a user is prompted for multi-factor authentication. And then if any condition access policies were in use. To view your sign in activity reports in your Microsoft Intra Admin Center, you can complete the following uh, uh, steps like you need to sign in, uh, to enter admin center there you need to choose all the users from the menu like the way we have done. So here basically you have to uh, you know uh, you can have the answer for these questions that what was the sign in challenges? How did the user complete the MFA? Like if I take you back to my sign in report for my all users. So this time, if you will notice when I was using my test user. 
authentication method can you notice again it is multi factor authentication similarly if i uh, go for my user let me check that was i think emp yeah under authentication methods okay so phone number is set up for this so basically when users uh, you know sign in with a multi factor authentication so that information is available into the sign in log that whether it was asked for the multi factor authentication or not so coming back to this questions so here which authentication method was used during the sign in so that we have you got to know why whether the user was unable to complete the mfa or not how many users were challenged for the mfa how many of user were unable to complete or or what are the common mfa issues and users are running into now when you are trying to manage the user authentication so under this there are different uh, authentication method that as a administrator you can configure so when you are using the another method if it is only a password of course it's not you know secure way right your identities can be compromised password can be leaked is easily easily and can be guessed okay or it may be you are typing the password and someone can have an eye keep an eye on it and he can just read the password that you are typing right so along with your password if you are configuring any sms that is like otp or any voicemail it is considered as a good authentication method it would be better if you are using the authenticator app or any software tokens or any hardware tokens like if you have observed like when you visit to your bank and all so whatever the uh, you know employees those are sitting over there when they are going to sign into their pc they are using a hardware token okay for sign in so when they are going to punch on it on then only they are able to log in over there and the best is that if you are not at all using any password it is a password less authentication for that there is a use of multi uh, authenticator app or you can use windows hello fido to security key or any security certificates so if you talk about the authentication math method strength and security so under high security if we talk about the convenience point of view the password less authentication is more convenient for the user because they do not need to remember the password and it is much secure also inconvenience is password plus two factor of the authentication like as a user when i am trying to log in first i need to type the password then i am getting another method of the authentication so just you know again and again just using the different method of the authentication sometime it is frustrated and time taking and of course convenient and low security is only the password now let's understand what is fido security so fido alliance it helps you to support open authentication specification and reduces the use of password as a form of authentication when you are going to sign in with password less credentials so some authentication method it can be used as a primary factor so when you sign into an application or service such as using fido to security keys or password the other authentication methods are only available as a secondary method so when you use intra multi factor authentication or sspr microsoft authenticator app so when you are going to use authenticator app and whenever you are going to sign in immediately a notification is sent to your mobile application here you need to just you know put your biometric or put your punch ye uh, fingerprint and then you are able to you know uh, approve the sign in or here to approve the sign in you get a number you just need to put the same number to your machine while login and then you will be able to log in successfully then you can uh, use uh, software o tokens 
these are typically applications such as uh, Microsoft Authenticator application and other authenticator applications. So basically, Entra ID it generates a security keys or seed, and that's input into application and used to generate each OTP. For implementing your authentication solution, which is based on Windows Hello for Business. So in your Windows 10, this Windows Hello for Business, it replaces the password with a strong two factor of authentication. On your mobile devices or even it can be used with a PCs. This authentication, it consists of new type of user credentials that is tied to a device and it uses the biometric or a pin. Windows Hello for business, it let user to authenticate to an Active Directory or Microsoft Entra ID account. This Windows Hello, it basically address different problems uh, with the password. Let's say a strong password, it can be difficult to remember, right? There are server breaches that can expose the symmetric network credentials and the passwords that are subject to replay attacks. Now let's understand how we can disable account and revoke user session. To mitigate the risk, like uh, you can understand that how these token works. So there are many kinds of token that fall into one of the pattern that is mentioned over there, like access token and refresh token. So when user authenticate to Entra ID, these authentication policies are evaluated to determine if user can be granted access to a specific resource or not. Now let's understand about the password protection that how we can deploy the password protection and manage the same. So when you're trying for the password protection, this password protection is basically is a very uh, uh, good feature of Entra where you are using uh, which is designed with some principle like domain controller that never have to communicate directly. OK, no new network ports are open on DC and no ADDS schema changes are required and the software that uses the existing ADDS container and service connect point schema object. So when you are deploying this uh, feature. Microsoft Entra password protection. This service run on any domain joint machine in a current AD ADDS forest. The service primary purpose is to forward the password policy download request from DC to Microsoft Entra ID. And then it return the response back from Microsoft Entra to Microsoft DC. Now let's understand how we can configure the smart lockout. So this is smart lockout just is it is to like uh, when a user is trying to put the wrong password. So after you know uh, some fail attempt, this account should be logged out. This can be uh, configured to make your account secure. Like for example, you are only using the password. So maybe any unauthorized user he can try to uh, you know guess the password. So if he is an authorized user by mistake, he can type the password one time, two time. That's it, right? But an unauthorized user, he can make different attempts. So here you can configure that after uh, you know 10 fail attempt after 5 fail attempt the account should be logged out. So now let's see how we can manage uh, the smart lockout feature over there. So under protection.
password protection. Yeah, under authentication method, there is a password protection. Under password protection right now, like in my organization trust environment, I have configured it three times. So after three wrong attempt, the user account will be locked. You can even decide the lock duration. Right now it is configured in 60 seconds means after one account, one minute account will be automatically activated. If you want to put some custom band password list so you can make it like I have used password. So my in my account user would not be able to use this password as a password. Here you can also like make it whether the password protection for Windows Server Active Directory so you can enable this password protection on Windows Server Active Directory. Mode do you want to audit? You can make it in an audit mode. You can just like right now check how it is working for the users. And if you want to enforce it for the user, you need to click on enforce. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now let's move on to the next topic where we are going to plan, implement and administer conditional access. So in this topic, we are going to understand how we can plan and implement for security default, plan security condition access policies, how we can implement the condition access policy control and assignment, template based condition access, test and troubleshoot the condition access policy, Implement the application control and session management, continuous access evaluation and authentication context. So condition access policies like the way we have just configured for the MFA. So condition access can, policies can be configured on the basis of the users and location, can be configured on the basis of the device, on the basis of the application that you're going to select or on the basis of the risk. So whatever the policy, the condition you have defined, for example, I have made it for the particular user group. Now when a user is trying to sign in, it will be checked. This condition policy is going to check whether the user is from this particular group. If yes, then it is going to ask for the MFA. And when user is going for the multi-factor authentication and the authentication is successful, he is going to use the services. If the user is not as per the condition policy, directly he will be allowed for the success, uh, allow for the access just by only the password. And if he is not able to authenticate himself, his access will be immediately blocked. Similarly, it can be based on any particular application. In my organization, I may be having some cloud application, some SaaS application and all. So any of the application, I can enable the MFA. OK, and if user is going to authenticate, then only he is able to use the services. These are some important uh, benefits of uh, your uh, condition access policy. Like it increase the productivity. Like only it only interrupt the users within us with us sign in conditions like if you are enabling it for all the users in your organization, it doesn't require, you know, it matters. Better enable it only for those users. Wherever there is a risk for you know, uh, identity uh, like uh, risk or there can be any kind of a risk for those users where there are high chances for the account compromised. So in this case, other users should not be bothered, right? As I said, when you are going for the, you know, multi-factor authentication or any kind of restriction, it is somehow, you know, sometimes very frustrating. So better keep it only for those users wherever there is a requirement. With the help of condition access policy. You can manage the risk like 
you can uh, automate the risk uh, you know control like whether there is a uh, user risk where there is a sign in risk so this will automatically trace out the type of risk and it will even go to allow the user or it is going to block the user. So as per the policy that you are going to configure. Condition access uh, policies, it enable you to audit the access to application. Present term of use for concern and restrict the access based on compliance policies. You can even manage the cost like moving access policies to Microsoft Enter ID. It reduces the reliance on custom or on premises solution for conditional access and their infrastructure cost. And plus this uh, policy also helps you to move toward the zero trust environment. As we just said that zero trust is what do not trust anyone just to verify everyone. So if you have some sensitive, uh, you know, uh, information that can be used uh, via any device or any application. So you can apply the condition access policy and the information will be protected. So when you are going to, uh, you know, configure the condition access policy here, you can define the condition. OK, like if it is based on a user risk, whether it is based on the sign in risk, device platform, location, client application or filter for the devices. So basically how it is working. <coughs> this access token, it enable the client to securely call protected web API. And they are used by web APIs to perform the authentication and authorization. Per the auth specification, these access tokens are opaque string without a format. So like here, when the access token is requested, user is assigned or non assignment is required. If he is, it is yes, then condition access policy are in scope of request. If not, access token is not issued. Then the if it is yes, like CSA policy again, CA policy are in a scope of request. If it is yes, then access control block condition satisfy. If no, then access token will be issues. Similarly, this will be working as per the condition and finally the access token will be issued. I have already given you the demo for the condition access policy and the assignment while I was, uh, you know, explaining you about the MFA. But again, we'll just explain you uh, a few more term again. Like, let me go to condition access policy. So now when you are going to create a new policy. Here you can put the condition like under condition. You can configure it as a user risk. OK, so user risk is like uh, it may be that user identity is compromised. OK, in that case, there is user risk is configured. If it is sign in risk, sign in risk means it is a kind of impossible travel. Yes, I have given you example like currently I'm working from Mumbai, but after two hours my sign in was, you know, locked from uh, any another IP address or any other location. So this is known as sign in risk means someone else is trying to sign in from your account. So when this kind of risk is is noticed immediately, this condition access policy is going to work. For example, you have configured the sign in risk. Maybe based on high level or medium. I am configuring it for high. Then under grant. You can immediately block the access. Or if you are granting the access here, you have different methods like do you require multi factor authentication? Do you require authentication strength? Require device to be marked as compliant or required intra ID hybrid join or term of use. So there are different methods according to that you can grant the user access for the same.
So as I said, just when you are configuring the multi-factor authentication, either you can grant the access or block the access. When you are granting the access, there are different controls that you can configure. Now coming to the session control, Session control is going to limit the experience of the user for the application. Like for example, when I'm going to sign in for the application, my new session is started. Now after some time, like if I'm not working on the application, it should be session out. So you can enable the session app. You can also, you know, create the session control with the help of condition access policy. You can enable like after some time, like even after one hour, when again I'm trying to use the application, I should be asked for the multi-factor authentication. You can create the template, okay, for the condition access policies. Condition access policies like already some templates are available that will help you like, for example, require multi-factor authentication for all the admins or require multi-factor authentication for all the guest user. So you just need to directly use that. Templates, let me go to condition access. Here you have an option to create new policy from template. Here you have some options like directly you want to go to zero trust. Remote work. Protect administrator emerging track. Uh, thread, uh, threads and so on. If I click on all, so I have all the options available like require multi-factor authentication for all the users. So it is going to require multi-factor authentication for all the, all the user account to reduce the user risk. This is for blocking the legacy authentication. So if you do not know about condition access policy, you can directly go to, uh, you know, just these templates and you can use these template for creating the policy. Guys, just give me a minute to have a sip of water. OK. So anyone any questions so far? We have just discussed about the multi-factor authentication and conditional access policy. Please let me know if you have any doubt, any questions so far. Can you all show me thumbs up if it's all clear about the multi-factor authentication and conditional access policy? Yes, guys, anyone? OK, so I will take it as a no. So let's move ahead. And now let's understand that how we can manage Microsoft Entra identity protection. So here we will understand that how you can review the identity protection basis, implement and manage user risk policy, implement the MFA registration policy, Monitor, investigate, and remediate related risky users and security for workload identities. And then Microsoft uh, Defender for identities.
Identity protection, it basically uses the knowledge Microsoft has gained from its uh, position in organization with Microsoft Entra ID. The consumer space in Microsoft account and in gaming with to protect your users. Microsoft analyze around 6.5 trillion signals per day to identify and protect customers from threats. These signals generated by and fed to identity protection and can be further fed into tools like condition access to make access decision or fed back to a security information and even management tool for further investigate based on organization policy. There are different type of risk, OK, like uh, anonymous IP address that is configured like when sign in from an anonymous you uh, anonymous IP address. For example, like uh, uh, any browser or an uh, anonymizer VPS and so on. Then second, it may be a typical travel. Where the sign in is from an a typical location based on the user's recent sign in. Malware linked IP address. Sign in from a malware linked IP address. Unfamiliar sign in pro pro properties. That is a sign in with properties we have not seen recently for the given user. Then uh, for example, uh, like I have given you one my personal experience like uh, where I was trying to give a uh, to make a transaction, right? I was trying to make a payment at the year night uh, around one o'clock and my account was freezed. OK, so similarly like any unfamiliar sign in like user have not at all sign in from an you know unusual timing. So this will be configured then leaked credentials. It indicate that the user's valid credentials have been leaked. Password spray, it indicates that multiple user names are being attacked using common password in a unified brute force manner. Microsoft Intra Threat Intelligence. It is Microsoft internal and external threat intelligence sources that have identified a known attack banner. New country, this is like a detection of discovered by Microsoft Defender for cloud application. Activity from your, uh, you know, anonymous uh, IP addresses and all. That is uh, uh, like a typical travel. OK, then suspicious inbox uh, forwarding. This detection is discovered by uh, Microsoft Defender for cloud application. Then under risk investigation, you have different reports that will give you that list of risky users, risky sign in and risk detection. There are three level of risk, low, medium and high. Now the licensing need for the identity protection. As I said, this is the premium feature. But again, for the identity protection, this feature is available only with the premium pre to P2 licenses. So if you are trying to configure the user risk policy, it is only available with P2 license. Sign risk policy available only with P2. Security reports. It is overview is not given with the P1 and free, but available with P2 licenses. Security reports for all risky users sign in and recitation. There is a limited information about the same, but all full detail is available with P2. For the notification again, it is not available with free and uh, you know P1. For the identity protection permission, you must be having global administrator role that is having full access to the identity protection. Security administrator, he is having full protection and can, uh, but he cannot reset the password of a user. Security operators, he can view all the identity protection reports and all. He can dismiss the user risk and confirm that yes, it's a safe sign in. And but these are the things that he cannot do. Security reader, of course, he can view all the reports and all. 
Now, when you're going to implement and uh, manage your user risk policy, so there are two type of risk policy that you can configure. The first one that is user risk policy. OK, where the both sign in risk policies and user risk policies can be enabled. OK. If you have to enable, you need to go to identity protection. OK, where you can configure both a user risk policy and the sign in risk policy. Now let me show you how we can enable the user risk policy and the sign in risk policy. Under protection, you will be having uh, option for uh, identity protection, user risk and sign in risk. First you can click on user risk policy. It can be, uh, you know, configured for a group of user or you can even make it for all the users. You can define the user risk, whether you want to make it for high risk, medium or low. And then if it is so, like if any user risk is configured, it is detected. User will be asked for password change. So automatically this policy is going to protect your user. Same in case of sign in. When there is a sign in risk detected, like let's say, as I said, from, uh, you know, uh, untrusted IP address, untrusted location, uh, impossible travel and so on. In this case, whenever this type of risk is detected, user will be asked for multi-factor authentication just to prove that he is a authorized user. Here you can also configure the condition access policy on the base of the user risk and sign in risk. And this is your multi-factor authentication that you can configure on the basis of the user risk and sign in risk. Under this identity protection only you have the reports where you can just see the reports for the risky users. Here I can see the report right now. I can see the uh, uh, two users where I can see that risk was uh, last updated on so and so date. OK. Like if I click on it. Users sign in. OK, and here I can see the log of the C users. Let me go back. This is for a uh, risky sign in. No data I have. Let me just select it for last 24, last one month. I don't think I have any information. No. So this is uh, the MFA registration policy. Let me explain one more thing about it. So basically this MFA, uh, this uh, policy, it uh, provide you that verify that who you are using more than just a username and password. So it provide uh, like when you are enabling the user who are like you are forcing the user for the registration policy. So then these user has to register themselves for the MFA and they need to configure them for the same. So this was all about the reporting and all how to get the report for the risky users and risky sign in and all. Now let me take you back. Now let's understand about the security for the workload identities. Now organizations, they can find the workload identities that have been flagged for the risk. OK, so workload identities, these workloads are basically your application. OK. So you can also, you know, uh, use this uh, 
um, reporting where you have the risk detection for the workload identity related this. These workload identities are different from your traditional user account. OK, cannot perform the multi-factor authentication for the same. Often they have no formal lifecycle process and it need to store their credentials or secrets. Workload identity risk is detected like the detection name that is Microsoft Entra Threat Intelligence. If there is any suspicious sign into that particular application, any unusual addition of credentials and admin confirmed account compromise. So these all are the detections that can be noticed into the reports. Now let's understand the Microsoft Defender for identity. Before that, anyone any questions so far related with the identity protection? Anyone any questions so far? OK, so I will take it as a no. Now Microsoft Defender for identity. Microsoft Defender for identity, it works for your on premises identity. It is going to help you out to monitor the users, entity behavior and activities with learning based analytics. It protect your users identity and credentials that is stored in your active directory. You can identify and investigate your suspicious users activities and advanced attack throughout the kill chain and it provides the clear incident information on a simple timeline for fast triage. So let me explain you one more concept for your uh, Entra. Uh, that was. Let me search for that. Yeah. Now here I would like to explain you about the administrative unit. So these administrative units are going to help you out to manage your users as per the groups and all like for example like if i take you to my one of the diagram okay now for example currently in my microsoft entra i have a user okay and username is for example Joe. OK, and now I have assigned. User admin role to this user. Now this is Joe is able to manage my Active Directory Entra. Please find out. OK. He is able to manage my Active Directory and whoever are the users are from my Active Directory. He is able to manage all the users. Right, but from security point of view, if I say. Let me just make it in this way. OK, now for example, this Joe is managing this whole Active Directory is managing the all the users. But here if we talk about the zero trust concept in that case, how I am able to you know trust on the Zuzu or even if I uh, follow the concept of you know that uh, assume breach. OK, in case if the Zoo identity is compromised, so whoever is the hacker, or the unauthorized user will be having full control on all my user of my Active Directory as Entra, right? So in this case, I will be, you know, distributing his access. In that case, I will be able, I, I will be using my administrative unit. So in this case, what I will be doing, I will be making 
four administrative unit. One, two, three, and four. Now I have these four administrative unit in my entra. Okay. One is let's say it's for Mumbai. Another is for Delhi. This is for um, Hyderabad. And this is for Kolkata. Okay. Now, for example, I have four business unit. Now I will be now assigning this user role, user administrator role for each and every unit. So like let's say earlier I was having only Joe who was managing the user admin. Now Joe is only managing the Mumbai unit. Right, so this is how. Joe is able to manage only for the Mumbai. Same way I have another user who is managing for Hyderabad. Like let's say here it is. Maria. For Delhi, I have another administrator. And for Kolkata, I have another user that let's say for this I'm making it. Manish. Then for this I will be making. Anita and this is for Zoom. So now I am having four different administrators and they are only managing the user for that particular unit. So this is how I would be able to work with the administrative unit and you will be able to manage the access of the users. Let me show you how it works and how you can create the administrative unit. So now let's say I'm going to create an administrative unit. And here I'm going to give the name like for example, if it is Mumbai unit. OK, now here. Under assigning role, I'm assigning the role that is for let's say it is user administrator. And I will be giving this role to my new user. OK, so this new test user he is added to this administrative unit and I have assigned the user administrator role to him. Let me click on create. OK, so now my Mumbai administrative unit is ready. Now here I will be adding my users who are a part of my Mumbai unit. OK. Like let's say I will be adding the member. I'm adding employee one, employee two. I will be adding some test user. And select. So these all are the members. Now they are our part of my Mumbai unit. OK. If you want to add any group. Also, you can add it. Under roles and administrators, if you want to assign any role to this group, you can do that. But anyhow, I have assigned this a user administrator role already. OK. But if I again go back to my user administrator. OK, so to entire unit, I would be able to, you know, uh, select assign this role. OK, and that user would be my admin would be able to manage the same. Right now I am not adding it. OK, and my unit is ready. My users are added. Now if I go back 
to my assigned role that I have assigned to my test user. So now you will notice I have assigned him user administrator role, but the scope is only for the Mumbai unit. So now the scope is limited, but earlier when I have assigned the role for the application administrator, the scope was set for the entire directory. So this is where I am able to control the access of the user. So that's what I have explained here. So earlier when you were providing the any role, so the scope was for the directory level. But now the scope is as the unit level. OK, so now in miss in my this directory. Now I have. My administrative unit. That is AU. OK, and now under AU I have four AUs and each and every AU I am having another, you know, separate user administrator. I will show you how we can test it. So as this user, this my new test user is only the user administrator role for this member unit. Now he should be able to manage the user. So now let me show you how we can do that. For that, let me go back to my Mumbai unit. So in this unit right now, I have one, two, three, four, five users. So this user should be able to change the password of any of these users, right? So for that, let me just go to my. Account. Let me sign in. Let me refresh it. Let me enter the password. Sorry, let me sign in again. OK, so now I will go to uh, users. And now this user is having user and reset a rule, so let me click on employee one. And for this. I'm trying to reset the account. The password cannot be reset. This may be the incorrect level or set. Oh, it should not be done. Let me refresh. OK, he is member. I have made this uh, user a user administrator. For this Mumbai unit. He should be able to change it. Let me refresh. Okay, let me try for any other user.
Okay, I'm surprised why it is not happening. Test user one. Yeah, so here you can see this test user one and I'm able to change the reset for this user. Let let me try, try a new password. Yeah, so I'm able to reset the password for this user. Sorry, we cannot. We're not able to reset the password right now. This may be due to the temporary issue. OK, this says that there is some temporary issue, but here I am able to click on reset button and I'm getting the option to put the new password over there. But the same if I try for any other user who is not the part of my unit, let's say if it is for uh, SC 900 user. And if I'm trying to click on reset, the password cannot be changed. OK, so this is how this administrative unit can be used so that you can control the access of your user. This is just like, you know, uh, only the uh, required uh, access you are giving to any user. So that's it guys for the session. From my side, there is again like uh, as because of the time uh, limitation. I couldn't take you other uh, learning path. OK, this is the course for entire full three days. So if you want to have the hands on or if you want to have a detail of this course, you can ask to my team and you can just have an idea how you can register yourself for the full three days training program where you will be given the hands on for the same. OK, and uh, yes, anyone any doubt, please uh, put into the chat box. I'm there to help you out. And uh, yes, thank you so much everyone for joining the session. It was really a great session with you guys. I hope I could give you the understanding of identity and access management. At least the overview I could give and the demo I have included. Uh, I tried to help you out to give you the idea that how this concept actually works practically. Thank you everyone once again. And let me know if you have any doubt. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for this session, guys. I already shared feedback form. Please fill this feedback form before leaving the session. And guys, those who are still remaining with the batches, please, please uh, redeem your batch. I already shared on chat box.